As my eyes fill with tears, my sweet daughter reaches up, pats my shoulder and says, it's okay, mommy. One day you can be pretty too. (laughs) So my kids keep me humble. Unfortunately, Kamala Harris doesn't have anything keeping her humble. I want to make sure that you understood what Sarah Huckabee Sanders was suggesting at that event with Donald Trump. That children are all that keep people humble, and that because Kamala Harris, whose name she seems wholly unwilling to correctly pronounce, doesn't have biological children, that she is then incapable of being humbled. Which of course is just a different way of saying that because she's a step-parent, she's not a real mom. Here's the thing, more than 40% of Americans are in blended families, meaning there's a step-parent or a step-child. I myself have a step-parent. I wonder what nearly half of the United states would think if they heard Sarah Huckabee Sanders and her party not considering step-parents real parents, or by association that a step-child isn't a real child. Something tells me that people wouldn't be too thrilled at this smug Republican qualifying what does and doesn't count as a real family. And let's be clear, it's not just Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Here's Marjorie Taylor Greene last year making a nearly identical point during a congressional hearing. Ms. Weingarten, are you a medical doctor? I am not. Are you a mother? I am a mother by marriage. By marriage, I see. Um, And And my wife is here with me, so I'm really glad that she's here, Rabbi Sharon Klein. Ms. Weingarten, and you haven't taught school since the 90s, so you're not a teacher anymore. Um, I am actually, Representative, I'm actually on leave from my teaching position, and this fall I will be teaching as a guest teacher at Cornell, my alma mater to talk about is your recommendations to the CDC as not a medical doctor, not a biological mother, um, and, and really not a teacher either. So what you did is you advised the CDC. Mr. Um, Mr. Chairman, that is, that, I mean, that's a, a Excuse me, character. this is my time. People like you need to admit that you're just a political activist, not a teacher, not a mother, and not a medical doctor. Now, obviously, the principal issue here is Green suggesting that non-biological parents aren't actually parents. Coming to you straight from the party that says there shouldn't be abortions because people can simply adopt, and then apparently, when they do adopt, Republicans will be there ready to criticize you for daring think that you're actually a real parent. Heads I win, tails you lose. But sure, pro-family, got it. There's also J.D. Vance, who basically introduced himself to the American people as Trump's VP pick by devolving into this scandal. What I was basically saying is that we're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made, and so they want to make the rest of the country miserable too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? That you're less than if you don't have kids, which of course made waves and became a massive headache for the Trump campaign. And so clearly, J.D. Vance recognized his mistake and apologized to the American people. (laughs) Sorry, I can't even finish that sentence. He doubled down. Obviously, it was a sarcastic comment. I've got nothing against cats. I've got nothing against dogs. I've got one dog at home, and I love them, Megan. But look, this is not, people are focusing so much on the sarcasm and not on the substance of what I actually said. And the substance of what I said, Megan, I'm sorry, it's true. And if you think the famed childless cat ladies were miserable, like Van suggested, then I really wouldn't want to see the Trump campaign after they watched Pete Buttigieg make short work of them on air. I wanted to see if you could react to that, referring to childish couples, or childless, I apologize, uh, in the Democratic Party, the powers that be. Um, He had made similar remarks about uh, Kamala Harris. He seemed to be referencing you. Um, What did you think of that? I just don't know what kind of guy goes around commenting on other people's families and family structures. Uh, When he said that, we were in the middle of an adoption journey, which has since led to us having uh, this uh, incredible uh, change in our lives of raising a son and a daughter, these beautiful twins. When he said that, that hadn't happened yet, but we'd already been through some uh, some tough reversals in that adoption journey. And, uh, you know, I just, I don't know, I just don't know why you would bring that into it. If we have a policy disagreement, let's talk about the policy disagreement, but going after people's kids or uh, attacking people for, for how their family is set up, you know, this is a country where I would like to think that, and I'm, never mind campaigns and politics, I'm just saying as people, 
and as policymakers who sometimes disagree, uh, we can all lay off each other's families. Um, but he didn't. He, he, when it came to the vice president, referred to her as a childless cat lady. What, what did you think of that? Yeah, again, I just think that's that's beneath the dignity of anybody who uh, seeks to present themselves as a, a U.S. senator or any kind of leader in this country. And uh, I mean, I'm not here to talk about campaigns and elections, so I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I think I it speaks for itself. Now, in fairness, Republicans have said that the way you can really tell that they're pro-family, despite all this nonsense from Vance and Sarah Huckabee Sanders and Marjorie Taylor Greene, is that they support IVF. Trump himself even said so at this debate. I have been a leader on IVF. Which, which is fertilization. The IVF, I have been a leader. A leader, you hear that? A leader. Meaning that when IVF came up for a vote this past week in the Senate, surely the party whose leader supports it would also support it, right? On this vote, the yeas are 51, the nays are 44, three-fifths of the senator, senators duly chosen uh, and sworn not having voted in the affirmative. The motion upon reconsideration is not agreed to. Turns out the bill failed when just two Republicans, Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins, voted for it in the Senate. And considering Republicans hang on Trump's every word, considering they killed the border bill for him, considering they will literally change their own names if Trump tells them to, it doesn't look like he tried very hard to be the fertilization leader that he claimed to be, huh? And look, of course Republicans don't care about family. That's just the shiny branding they hide behind while doing everything in their power to hurt families. For example, Trump's budgets cut earned benefits, which ensure that families can care for children and grandchildren. Of the 15 states with the highest child poverty rate, 12 voted for Trump, and of the 15 states with the lowest child poverty rate, 11 voted for Biden. And it's not any better for maternal mortality rates. Of the 15 states with the highest maternal mortality rate, 12 voted for Trump. Of the 15 states with the lowest maternal mortality rate, 13 voted for Biden. They fall over themselves grandstanding about protecting families and kids, and yet they vote against childcare. They vote against early education. They vote against universal pre-K. They vote against the child tax credit, which halved child poverty in this country. They vote against SNAP, where half the recipients are children. They vote against Medicaid, where again, half the recipients are children. Any any way you cut it, it becomes clear that while Republicans parade themselves around like these great defenders of families in this country, the actual facts fail to back that up at all. And just more broadly, I'm sorry, but I am so fucking tired of Republicans telling people how they should or shouldn't live, or that their lives aren't valid if they don't comport with whatever narrow-minded worldview is espoused by some dwindling faction of far-right extremists. That you can't have non-biological parents, you can't get reproductive care, you can't get family planning, you can't go to the doctor's office, you can't travel between states, you can't read certain books, you can't identify how you want to identify, all underscored by the fact that the party seeking to control your life is the same party that brings brands itself the party of small government. I gotta say, there is nothing quite as big as Republican small government. Before you go, just a quick note, if you'd like to see more of my content, which is always free of advertising, sponsorships, and paywalls, please make sure to subscribe to this channel using the subscribe button right here on the screen. And if you'd like to support my work even further, you can grab a copy of my instant number one New York Times selling book, Shameless, available for sale right now. That link is also on the screen. Thanks so much for watching.